Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of ClearCast. Uh, it has struck us uh, over the years um, that with the almost logarithmic rise of wound healing modalities available to us, both devices uh, and pharmaceuticals, uh, even bioengineered products, uh, there has developed a significant amount of, uh, of, of confusion, uh, not only in the literature, but in the clinic about how to employ these things and how to make the biggest difference uh, in wound healing. And unfortunately, I think the definition of success in many cases has been how well one product takes you from the alpha to the omega, all the way along an axis uh, of, uh, of healing. And in reality, we believe and we would posit and put out there that that is an oversimplification and is just not the case. And to that end, let's talk about battling that axis of, of evil, if you will, that, uh, uh, that wound uh, with an axis of healing. And, and with that, uh, if we look here, we can imagine this axis, this x-axis uh, as uh, being a wound from its start to its finish, from its alpha to the, to the omega. And along this axis, uh, there are certain points that we have to hit. And these points may be well-defined, they may be ill-defined, but we can probably practically define them uh, uh, and divide them into, into three main areas, and this certainly can change over time. The first area um, and point that we have to hit is we have to take things off. We have to take off necrotic tissue, and we have to take off pressure. And, but the first thing is debridement. And after we've secured vascular and infection control, that is we've improved the vascularity to a point where the patient can heal and the infection is no longer a barrier to healing, we have to debride that wound. And to that end, we have a variety of modalities to do that. We have a scalpel, we have hydrotherapy or hydro debridement uh, through devices like a VersaJet of sorts, uh, ultrasonic devices, uh, the soaring device, the Mysonics slash Medline device. We also have larvae uh, that we can use. But these are changing all the time. Uh, but the technologies uh, are not what are important. It is the concept that is important. And you see here the dotted line after that. Uh, means that we, after we have our good initial debridements, we have maintenance debridements throughout the rest of the course of therapy as needed. The other thing we have to take off is pressure, and we have to protect the foot or protect the part of, uh, that we are healing. And that goes without saying, and it goes along the entire axis uh, of healing uh, from the beginning uh, to the end. The next step that we have to hit is we have to move from this complicated wound that we've just debrided. Maybe we have exposed structures. Uh, and such, and we have to move towards simplification. We have to move toward promotion of granulation or, uh, and or regeneration. And sometimes those things coexist depending on the technologies that we're using. In that context, uh, negative pressure wound therapy, uh, particularly by way of the VAC, has seemed to be uh, quite effective uh, in assisting us in that area. If we use it beyond that area, in general, uh, we may be, I believe, uh, throwing a good, good technology after a bad idea because the goal for a VAC is really not to heal the wound. Although it has been assessed as such, uh, frankly, the goal of the VAC is to uh, prevent uh, or is to simplify a wound, if you will, to take it from that point after the debridement, after we've secured the in, uh, and eliminated the infection and improved the vascularity, to a point where we have a beautiful uh, superficial uh, granular bed or we're moving toward that. Uh, then it can be discontinued. Um, the next step are advanced dressings or topicals. This could be anything from Bacaplerman to uh, a silicone top cover and anything that is being used uh, in a variety of clinics around the country and around the world for that matter. Uh, but these are products that actually could overlap with the other things that we've talked about as you see here as you move uh, up and down uh, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this axis as well. Still another class of technologies are the acellular matrices um, or perhaps some of the bioengineered tissues, the cell-based therapies, or even stem cell therapy. And I believe that fits into this area, maybe perhaps a little bit farther to the left, but I think that it is probably quite helpful um, in, in the context of uh, further promoting uh, a, a simplified wound bed and moving toward regeneration, particularly in the case of acellular matrices, uh, which may assist in a regenerative process. And after we've done all of these things or potentially used all of these, other, other modalities can assist us in wound closure. We can either allow the wound to heal in secondarily. We can use products like skin stretching devices. We can use flaps. Uh, and we can secure those 
uh, with uh, VAC as a bolster, uh, uh, perhaps if we need, uh, if need be. But we don't necessarily have to. Do that. But we have all of these modalities that can be used in this area. So if you take this as a context, what we see here is sort of a rich spectrum of healing along this axis, and we have a whole host of modalities, and almost all technologies could probably be fit into those categories, and I certainly others will be developed in the future, but I think we have to take this sort of look at wound healing and to divide it up into key points that we want to hit, rather than to say that one size fits all, one product fits all, because I believe that's not only naive, I believe it hurts therapy and ultimately it, it retards our ability to advance and to innovate and to make the biggest difference for our patient in keeping a few more legs on a few more bodies. So I want to say that simplification is the key. That's the golden hour here that you see, uh, and, and that's really where some of these products really can shine. And then we can use other modalities. For more information on this, I'd uh, move you over to the uh, diabetic-foot.net website uh, where we have our ClearCast, also on iTunes, uh, as well as instructional videos. Uh, and again, I, I want to thank you for joining me on another edition of ClearCast.